What is up guys, Vulcan here. So today uh, I put a poll out on Twitter to see what you guys wanted to see. It was pretty close and it seemed, but it seemed that more of you guys wanted to see some pro gameplay than live uh, grand challenge uh, gameplay. So in today's video I'm going to be going over some replays that I had versus Bernstein Cat, Music Master, and Sensei Beast. So um, first of all, uh, in the replays against Music Master, that was for an invitational tourney that uh, I was invited to by Mobile Esports 360, and seven of the people in that tournament were uh, like drawn from a hat type of thing. Then the the rest of them were invited. I think it was probably around a 32 man tournament. Um, the person who ended up winning it was Toby Spirithawk, who's one of the best German players. And yeah, so I lost versus Music Master, but I figured I'd just go over the replays anyway. Um, just because I thought it was cool since he was one of the top two in CCGS in the whole world. And yeah, I think, just thought it was interesting to go up against him. Um, and then in the replays versus Bernstein and Sensei Beast, that was actually replays from the Sandstorm Cup, which I managed to win. There were originally four 1,000 man qualifiers, and whoever qualified, whoever was top eight in each of those qualifiers, got into a 32 man bracket tourney. You had to do four best of threes in order to get to the finals. And after each game, you got to ban one card. And then in the finals, it was a best of five, and you got to ban a card after each game. So. Yeah, I managed to win the whole thing, and I thought it would just be kind of cool to go over the replays from it. And it seems like you guys wanted to see it, so here it goes. <laughs> okay, so currently he has... Uh, he just starts off with Ice Spirit, and I don't I mean, I don't really want to make, uh, be too aggressive at the start, so I just log the Ice Spirit so it doesn't get too much damage, and, uh, I just play minis in the back because he plays Ice Golem. He gives you some Fireball value, just decide to Fireball the Musketeer and the Ice Golem. No point in zapping it because the Ice Golem would just kill the minions either way. He pumps up, and... As soon as he pumps up, I well I, I wait before I have 10 elixir and then I go with giant uh, minions at the bridge. I know he just used his ice golem, so even I didn't know exactly what his deck was, but he I knew he couldn't go with like an ice golem zap and destroy my minion horde. So uh, that's why I went with that. Um, and yeah, I managed to get a lot of damage from his tower. Uh, I throw the miner out to kill his pump for obvious reasons, and. Yeah, right now the game's looking really good. I knew that uh, he'd run this deck again because the first matchup against him, which I uh, lost the recording for, unfortunately, um, he ran this deck. So I ran Giant uh, Night Witch intentionally to counter it, and it was a good decision. So I play Night Witch in the back just to kind of cycle. And at this point, I know that his uh, right tower, I can just finish off with like a minor fireball or a couple minor fireballs. And my Night Witch is going down that lane. So it would have been really hard for him to defend my Night Witch and my Giant at the, and my Miner at the same time. So that's why I went in the left lane with that. Um, he gives me some nice fireball value. And I don't really have anything in hand to destroy his expo. I could have gone with Minion Horde and it probably would have worked out just as well. But I wasn't sure exactly what was in his hand, so I, I knew that if I spent three spells on the expo, I could finish it off. And I already had both of his towers so low that it didn't really matter too much. I just fireball his tower, just getting some nice value. He gives me log value, just log it. I'm pretty much just spell cycling him at this point. Um, I have a great matchup against him. And... Yeah. So... I mean, at this point, I'm just playing defense. Um, I don't want him to take my tower, so 
And he had a really nice defense there, so I, I minor fireball to finish off his uh, expo, and I get the win. So yeah, at this point, I was like, great. Um, there's no way this dude's gonna run expo again. And let me tell you, boy was I wrong. He decides to go with uh, another expo deck. And I was like, wait, what? Like, as soon as I figured out what he was playing, I was, like, so confused. Like, and he switched out some cards so that he could have countered my giant Nightwish deck, but I wish I'd run it again because I, I could have easily beat this if I just stuck with giant Nightwish. But I was sure he was going to switch decks, and I didn't want him to counter me, so I decided to switch decks. Um, I play my Ice Wizard in the back there. He doesn't, he's not really doing much. I guessed that he would have Tesla because usually, uh, Knight... Um, Archer decks have Tesla in it because I, at this point I was assuming that he had, uh, what do you call it? Graveyard, like, Ice Golem, Knight. That was just my guess. So I thought he had Double Tank Graveyard, I guess is the name of it. Um, so I predicted his Tesla and he still defended it because he had a Fireball. So, he's playing this really smart. He's not pumping up because he knows that if he pumps up, then I'm just going to punish him and destroy his tower with an expo. So, he doesn't pump up. Um, he tanks me with the knight, and he drops the Tesla, which I managed to predict, but because of that fireball, it literally didn't matter. Even though I predicted all of his Teslas, like this whole entire game, it... It did nothing, and normally if you predict a Tesla, you can, like, win the game. If you don't predict a Tesla, you lose the game, but in this one, even though I predicted it, I still lost. And, I mean, he definitely he definitely played it well. It wasn't just like I counter-decked him and, you know, that's it. Uh, he, I wouldn't say he outplayed me. I think we played equally, but there wasn't... Um, there wasn't much else I could do. So I played a defensive Expo. At this point, I don't even know he has Pump. I think that he just, like, has Expo or Graveyard. I don't think I've even seen the Expo. So I play a defensive Expo just to hopefully kill his, uh, whatever he drops. And then he pumps up. And I was, like, so confused. Oh, uh, he might have pumped earlier. I kind of forget. But I know when I was playing this game, I forgot. I definitely forgot he had Pump. So he's just kind of cycling me out. Um, I don't want to rocket that pump, and he goes with Expo and Defense, which is, it really puts me in an awkward situation. I don't want to rocket his Expo, because, I mean, there, like, there's no value from that. I don't want to rocket his tower, because then he could play a pump or play an Expo and get me. So he's def he's playing this really well. Um... I play a defensive Exo because, like, there's nothing I could do. And at this point, he's just like, oh, I'm just going to fire si si fireball cycle this dude out and pump up. And that's exactly what he does. Um, I know there's, like, at this point, it's do or die. If I don't finish off his tower, then I lose. And so I go aggressive with the Expo. I have an Expo on defense, and I'm hoping that uh, the defensive Exo can help aid me. I play a terrible Ice Golem because... I don't know. I don't know if that was leg or what. I don't think it was really leg, but like... It was just like, I don't even know what to do at this point. So, he goes with uh, Expo. I rocket it. Honestly, what I probably should have done is play a defensive Expo, but... Uh, play it, like, in the right lanes, out of range of the tower, so that even if he fireballs the Expo, he can't uh, hit my tower at the same time. And, but either way, he has such an elixir advantage of me, like, it didn't matter. I play a bad tornado there, just hoping to get uh, some tower damage. Doesn't work. I kind of had a loss for what to do now. And I fireball that expo, not much. Uh, sorry, I rocket that expo, not else, much else to do. And he pretty much takes the game from there. I mean, he's just pumping up like, like a madman. Uh... He fireballs my expo. I should have played the expo one tile to the right, so it would have been out of fireball range. It's like, I'm not um, really misplaying anything, but it's like, there's a couple things I could have done that would have made the match a little bit closer. I don't think I would have won, but I definitely could have made it closer. Um, right here, I'm giving him fireball value, which is unfortunate, but... Yeah, he's kind of wrecking me. 
goes with the log. He just decided to spell cycle me out. This is a pretty entertaining game, but I mean, I figured I'd show it. It's against the Music Master. I said on the poll I was going to show this replay, so I figure I'll just show it, even though it's, I don't know, not the best game in the world. But yeah, Music Master managed to beat me, uh, and we'll play Tim. He went on to lose in the bracket, unfortunately, and yeah, he didn't finish top, but I thought it was just kind of cool I versed him because he was one of the... He was second place in CCGS. Okay, so in this next matchup, I go up against Bernstein Cat. And this is the start, or this is the fourth match in the Sandstorm Cup bracket. So I go with Golem. Um, I don't really know what he's going to run because he's a pretty versatile player. And I think Golem, this Golem deck is pretty solid. And I run Zap here if... I think my opponent's going to have Infernal Dragon. I run Log if I think they're going to have uh, Log Bait. And unfortunately, he run Log Bait, which is a lot harder and a lot closer of a matchup for me. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I got the King Tower activated, which is really good. If I don't get the King Tower activated, then it's going to put me in a bad situation. But I did. Um, I just kind of wait in there because I don't want to drop a goal in the back. I really don't want to drop anything in the back that could give him, like, an advantage because I waste a card and he just counters it with a princess and I get no value from it. So I wait for his move. He plays princess in the back. I go baby dragon, uh, same lane as the princess. Baby dragon, same lane as the princess is, like, always a good play to do because the princess will not anywhere close to solo the baby, uh, to solo kill the baby dragon. He's doing a really good job here keeping his princesses alive. Um, he definitely played this matchup really well. I wouldn't, I don't think he really could have done anything differently, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, he he's protecting those princesses like nothing else, which with Logway is really what you want to do. Like, if you can keep the princesses alive, then you win. Usually. Not always, but most of the time. It's it's a really good... It's like the best way to play Logway. So yeah, he's just keeping his princesses alive like a madman. Um... I don't want to spend my golem here, so I just decided to tornado it. I like to say tornado for the goblin barrel, but I had a really bad hand there, and I knew I'd zap and cycle. So I just zap the goblin barrel. It gets only gets one hit because I have both towers activated, which definitely helped me out a lot. Um, against this matchup, I really didn't want to play my golem until a double elixir because I know that he could punish me really hard in the opposite lane with like a knight goblin gang, and I would get wrecked. Because I won't have enough elixir to defend it and attack also. So he goes opposite lane and I play a nice tornado which manages to defend the goblin uh, barrel. And right now I'm in a really good situation. So I play Night Witch um, hoping to bait out a rocket or something like that. I don't want to stack up my troops too much because he can just tornado rocket them. And that's exactly what he does. So as soon as he rockets I'm like... Okay, this guy's at a huge elixir disadvantage. He didn't really get a whole lot of value out of that rocket. It wasn't a terrible rocket, but it was definitely the right play. But it wasn't a whole lot of value. Uh, probably what I should have done there, though, is instead of playing a golem at the river, I should have just pumped up. And then, since he wasted his rocket, he could not have uh, punished my pump. And I would have had a huge elixir advantage. But I go aggressive at the river. I get half his tower. I thought I could take his full tower, but he played such good defense that I didn't quite get it. Um, at this point, I can just zap his goblin barrels because I have, like, uh, because I have both towers activated, so it'll, like, completely kill the goblin barrel. I'm just playing it slow. I start a golem in the back, just kind of a defensive golem. Uh, I have a bad tornado on the goblin barrel, but it was well played by him because he played it in the back so that the tornado wouldn't do much. And yeah, I'm just kind of, I'm trying not to stack up too many troops. Don't want to give him rocket value. Play my Night Witch. Uh, I think I, yeah, I go ahead and go on with the river. Because he had such a hard time defending that, that I knew that he probably was low on elixir. So a go with the river could probably get to his tower. But those double princesses, let me tell you, they are killing it on defense. 
They can they destroy my golem. I like don't even get any damage on the tower. It was unbelievable. Um, but I'm still spamming troops. As I at this point I'm like I can. There's no way he defends this. But like, so he destroyed me, and I thought I lost the game this one. It's like three princesses on the bridge. No idea what to do. I wasn't sure if I should drop a defensive golem there or a mega Man. I decided to go with a mega Man and it ends up working out. Um. Yeah, so here I'm like, man, he can get, he can just rocket cycle me out at this point. I don't want to go with Golem. So I, what I try to do is use a predictive tornado to uh, tornado his troops on the tower. So on Baby Dragon, he can get some splash damage to finish off the game. He plays a nice knight out of range of my tornado, but it, uh, the tornado manages to redirect my lumberjack and win me the game. Uh, definitely well played by him and a very close matchup. Okay, so in this matchup, he banned Tornado. So I wasn't sure what to do wrong, but I was like, oh wait, I'm pretty good at uh, giant uh, double minions. And since you can't Tornado back like my minions, which Tornado is a really solid counter to minions, I was like, this deck could work out pretty well. So right now I'm just waiting for his move. I don't really want to start because I know he might have Inferno Dragon or like Tekka. And then he could get a lot of defensive value on my giant and then counter push. So kind of waiting for his move. It's not like the worst play to start with Giant or the worst play to start off the match, but it's, you know, I would say wait a little bit. Um, I start off Nightwish in the back at the exact same time he drops the Bandit, which is kind of unfortunate, but ends up working out just fine. Right now, he decides to go with a defensive Golem. And since he goes to the defensive Golem, I'm like, well, I want to keep that Nightwish alive. And I decide to go with a minor and a zap in order to make sure my night witch kills the golem and the golem doesn't like get to my tower because at this point I know I have uh, since my deck is cheaper than his I know that I had kind of an, a not really an elixir advantage but like I definitely had more offensive firepower right there so he pumps up so I'm just trying to punish that pump I go aggressive with the giant I was hoping that uh, my minions would not walk in front but since he poisoned anyway, it didn't end up mattering because either way, the minions would have died. Uh, my giant's in the tower, and I know it's like either he can defend the giant or he can defend the pump. So I go with the miner on the pump. And unfortunately for him, he mispredicts the miner. So I end up taking out his pump and pretty much finishing off the tower with my giant. So at this point, he's in a really bad situation. I have his tower completely down. He has like... Well, he has a four elixir advantage, but it's going to be tough for him to finish it off. Um, I know I can't really cycle to a, to a punish in time, so uh, I just decided to fireball's pump. And I think I know I can you know, cycle back to fireball and get some value. And because I fireballed it, he'll probably stack up a lot of troops. So, uh, yeah. So I log his Night Witch here because I know that... Uh, a log plus a fireball will kill a night witch. So I finish off the night witch, and I'm just kind of defending. I play a giant there just to because even though it's like you don't really want to play a giant same lane as a golem. Um, at this one, I'm just trying to not lose the game because I know I can just finish off this tower. And yeah, so right now if the game had gone on longer, he would have got a lot of damage on my tower, but. Uh, since it didn't, uh, I just finished off the tower and got the W. So yeah, it was a very nice matchup against him. Uh, it's just important to make sure I had the right punish cards in hand to punish his pumps. Okay, so in the next matchup against Bernstein, uh, I used a deck that Music Master used versus me. And because uh, Tornado was banned, I didn't really know what to use because I used a lot of Tornado. Um... But it's not like I can't play a deck without Tornado. It's just like all the five decks in my deck slot had Tornado in them. So I switched to this deck with music uh, music used against me and it ended up working out pretty well. So it's like the exact same matchup that Music Master had against me. Um, he used Rocket and, you know, I didn't want to go too aggressive. I didn't know what he had in hand. didn't want to get punched really hard. So I played my Ice Skull in the back. He... Plays his ice skull in the back. Not much is happening. 
So I just decided to go with an expo. Don't want to overcommit on it. Um, at this point, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what deck he has. And I know that, um, I, I know that my expo won't break through there, so I just play some Goblins of the River, try to get some tip damage. He, he spends his log, and I cycle to another pump. So now I know that I can just, um, X, uh, sorry, I can just expo him because he just spent his rocket and I can stack a lot of troops behind my expo because he can't get any rocket value on me. So I play my Ice Golem and I go expo. Because I know he doesn't have like a Neg Knight or a Giant or like a P.E.K.K.A to punish me, so expo is definitely a good play there. Um, he's in an awkward situation. He probably shouldn't have rocketed in my pump because I have an expo and... Yeah, I pretty much take down most of his tower there. So the Expo is just getting a lot of damage. I want to get as much damage as possible because I don't have a big spell. So I try to defend that Mega Minion even. The Ice Spirit uh, resets my tower. And... Yeah. Okay, so... He goes with Expo. Um... Smart Expo by him. I'm just defending it right now. I play my Tesla at the river because I knew I was just playing it into a troop, but I literally just need to cycle to something to tank for the Expo. Um, I'm just trying to tank for the Expo at this point. I play my Ice Spirit there, trying to predict something. Um, I play another Tesla there just because not much else I could do. I play my Log just to, you know, get some chip damage on the Expo so that it won't get too much damage on my tower, and just defending at this point, trying to get a big pump advantage. Uh, I play defensive expo. Intentionally, I make sure that I play out of range of rocket so that he can't get uh, value on my pump and my expo at the same time. I know I have an elixir advantage, so I'm literally just cycling troops to tank the expo. I think I even decide to pump up here. Yeah, because I know that I have an elixir advantage, so I can just keep sending down tanks and just keep defending um, I log his expo I get an I catch an ice spirit there and I think I go for another pump just trying to get a huge elixir advantage and yeah now I know I have an elixir advantage I go in for the expo because I'm like I'm I have two pumps on the field he has nothing on the field so much elixir so he rockers it, and I'm just like, I'm just going to cycle back to an expo as quickly as possible. I go for another pump because you can't punish me with the rocket. You can't punish me with the expo. I literally already have a troop on the field. I had 10 elixir, so I go with another expo. And I'm just, at this point, I have a huge elixir advantage. Not much he can do. He tries to defend it, but it doesn't matter. I even have another expo. And I managed to get the win in like five seconds so yeah it was a good game uh, I had the deck matchup uh, there for sure and I managed to 3-0 Bernstein who um, beat me in the CCGS uh, qualifiers and I got second place in it because of him so it's kind of a grudge match but I'm friends with him so it wasn't really a grudge match because we're friends but like you know it was kind of fun to beat him and get a little bit of revenge so yeah that was my uh, matchup against Burn, that was the semifinals. And then next is the match against Sensei Beast. So in the first matchup against Sensei Beast, I had no idea what he was running. Um, I looked at his stats royale profile to see what decks he had in there. And all of them were just a hog deck that he was using on ladder. So I didn't know what to think. And I just... I uh, decided to go with Expo because it's pretty consistent and I think I can beat pretty much any matchup with it as long as it isn't like a hard, hard counter. So yeah, this is the matchup against Sensei. He was using um, Hog Bait, I guess, with a Mortar, which is a very solid deck. And in my starting hand here, I just had... Ice Wizard, Log, uh, Tornado, and Ice Golem, and usually you just want to start with whatever's in your whatever is cheapest in your hands. Here I activated the Tornado, but 
I made sure to block those bats. Uh, I mean, I activated the King Tower with the Tornado. But I made sure to block those bats with the Ice Wizard. Otherwise, he would have got a lot of damage on my tower. I just throw some skeletons behind this Ice Golem to make it a bit more menacing. He wastes the log. No big deal. Not much has happened. I have my King Tower activated, so I'm in a really good situation right now. Um, here, I've tried versing this matchup before with Expo, and if you try to uh, defend his Mortar without defensive Expos, you'll end up losing the match. So, I knew from previous experience, the best way to beat this deck is to play a lot of defensive Expo. Um... Yeah, so I play a defensive extra there. He plays a nice hog, gets down my expo because he doesn't want to just leave it on the arena because then I could stack up another uh, expo, or if I could play an expo at the bridge and have a defensive expo to back it up. So he played this matchup really well for sure. So I definitely have the deck advantage, but it's all just about how you play it. Um, yeah, so I play another defensive expo. My plan is just to try to um, have an expo on defense and then that can defend my expo on offense. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to play defensive. Um, he goes to the hog, trying to get rid of my expo. Smart decision. And I don't really, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit of a waste to hog, but it's all good. Didn't lose in the game. Um, just kind of waiting. I didn't really want to play my expo into his mortar because his mortar had already been set up. So I just decided to rocket the tower. And as it's working. Both of us are kind of in an awkward situation. Neither of us really know what to play. So, okay. So here he goes with the uh, mortar. And this mortar actually ends up uh, not locking onto my tower, but it locks onto my ice wizard. And he does a really smart play here. He plays his hog. So my ice rooster doesn't move, and my mortars and his mortars just destroying my tower. So he got a huge damage advantage there. Very well played by him. Um, but I'm not going to go. Uh, here I try to cycle to an exo because I think I have an elixir advantage on him. So I want to make use of the elixir advantage and try to get some damage on his tower. Um, he plays his hog rider. I tornado it backwards just to make sure that it doesn't kill my expo and he has a nice zap but I managed to get a good amount of damage on this tower even though the expo is really low um, it can still get a lot of damage and here I play uh, another defensive expo to defend his mortar I played it one tile too high but it doesn't end up being too big of a deal uh, he plays his minions and I just tornado to get rid of them even though I know he has the hog rider um, I know my expo will still be there, and it'll be able to defend his hog just fine. So, I know I have um, an elixir advantage here, so that's why I go in with the expo. It's really important to... It's not necessarily that you have to keep track of elixir, but it's just like... As soon as your opponent... Um, if your opponent like, throws 10 elixir at the bridge, then you know you have elixir advantage if you defend it, and you still have troops that are alive on the field. Um, here I just, I'm playing this game really slow because I know if I go aggressive, he can, he'll be able to defeat me. So I go with another rock on the tower because I have the defensive expo set up and I know I can defend his hog rider no matter what he throws at me. So that's why I did that. I'm really not going to go in with expo unless I have an elixir advantage. And if I already have... Um, an expo on the field, then either I could cycle to another expo or I could just go with a rocket cycle. And since he didn't have anything that could really punish me, I knew it would be a safe win just to rocket cycle. So all I need here is one more rocket and I get the first game, which was very long. But I think it, um, it was very well played by him and I think it was pretty well played by me. Okay, so my second matchup, um, he decided to ban Graveyard because he knows that I really like Graveyard and I play a lot. So that was the ban in this match. So since he banned, 
uh, since Graveyard was banned, I really still didn't know who he was going to play, so I just decided to go with Golem Tornado because I know it's it's pretty consistent and you can uh, outplay a lot of matchups, especially with the Tornado. So I don't really want to make the first move because I have a Golem deck and I really like it when they're uh, I really like this deck in Double Elixir. He plays an Ice Golem, so just defend it with a Mega Knight. Um, I play a Mega Knight a bit forward just in case he decides to. Go aggressive with a hog or something. Just want to get that ice going down as quick as possible. I would have liked to activate my king tower with that tornado. And it's technically possible to do, but it's very risky when he plays his miner on that tile. If he played even one tile higher, it would have been impossible to activate my king tower. So I pump up. He has a nice prediction poison, which... Uh... All... Well... Yeah, it didn't almost lose me the game. It pretty much, I don't know, it got a lot of damage on the tower. Pretty much sealed the deal. If I'd played my uh, Lumberjack one tile up, it might have been able to kill that um, cannon cart without me, without uh, taking a lot of damage on the tower. So, just cycle my baby dragon in the back. It was tempting to play Golem there, but I didn't want him to uh, rush me on the other side and completely take my tower so I didn't and here I play Nightwish in the opposite lane because I know he has poison and I'd literally be playing my Night Witch into an Ice Wizard and a Mega Moon it would get absolutely no value so I just played in the left lane so that he'd have to do something to defend it and I don't have much of a choice here but to play a defensive golem because well first of all it's the only card in my hand anything if I played a tornado it would literally do nothing so I play my defensive golem I know he, he won't be able to punish me because I'm using it on defense. So here he plays his Miner, and the nice thing about Tornado is that you can... Uh, anytime you play a pump, you can Tornado a Miner away from the pump. And it's a really good move to do. Right there, if I would have had one more Elixir to drop that goal, it, I would have been in a really good position. But I didn't, so I had to play my Night Witch because I didn't want to lose the tower. Um, I go in for another pump because he just spent his poison and he just spent his miner, so I knew he didn't really have anything to kill it. And here, I thought that he would ignore my pump and just try to finish me off, and I was right. But I did not expect him to tornado my golem away, which ended up being a really good play and won him the game. So definitely well played to him. I think that if he had not finished off my tower there, I had such a huge elixir advantage that I probably could have finished him off. So definitely well played. Okay, so in the third matchup, I had I got the ban this time, so I decided to ban Tornado. And even though usually I hate it when Tornado is banned, um, I thought I didn't want him to run this deck again because it's a really solid deck and it's not one of those decks you can just like counter uh, deck very easily. Uh, Especially without um, Graveyard, because Graveyard could beat this deck, but yeah, Graveyard was banned. So I decided to ban Tornado because I knew that Tornado is really good versus this giant deck, and that was my thought process here. And he decided to go in with the exact same deck, which I was a bit surprised by, and probably wasn't the best decision. So at the start of this match, I have Giant and... I don't really want to make the first play because this is a in like a grand challenge I just go ahead and play the giant because it doesn't matter that much but in competitive play I, you really try not to make the first move um, he goes with ice wizard and my first thought is that he has an expo deck so I don't want to waste my giant if I would have known he had this deck I would have just played the giant in the back into the ice wizard but that was my thought process there um, so yeah, at this point I still don't know that he has the same deck. And then when I see this, I'm like, oh, he's running the same deck. And then I think, I thought that he probably just put a Tesla Tower in there. And turns out he just decided to swap in an Ice Spirit. So interesting decision by him. Probably, I don't know. It's like, it's a smart move and it's not a smart move at the same time. But at this point, I knew he had the same deck. Um, so... I'm thinking, oh, I can win this matchup. I, all I want to do 
is just not give him valuable poisons. Because if I give him valuable poisons, then he'll be able to beat me for sure. Um, I defend his miner. I log his ice with it just so it doesn't get too much damage on my tower. And just because I get a little bit of damage on his. Kind of an even trade. Um, I play my giant in the back because I know even if he punishes me in the other lane, I can use a minion horde on defense and get a bunch of value from it. So he plays it smart. Um, he plays his cannon card in the back. At this point, I just want to get that cannon cart down as fast as possible. I know he has poison, so I'm trying not to play my Night Witch because he has poison, Ice Wizard, Mega Knight. My Night Witch would literally get no value. And here, I know he doesn't have Tornado, so I Fireball Zat and get rid of that because I know my Giant could get a ton of damage on the tower and there's literally nothing he can do about it by the time the Giant was already there. So, what I'm trying to do right now is not give him poison value. Um, I'm pretty much ignoring his miner because anything I drop on it would get poisoned. And I thought he was going to do prediction poison, so I was kind of waiting. Now I play a minion horde to finish it off. Uh, I managed to kill his cannon cart. I don't know, that might not have been the best play by me, but he had an elixir advantage because of... Uh, because I fireball zapped and went aggressive with that giant a minute ago. So now he's just kind of uh, cashing out his elixir advantage and getting some damage on me. But I know I have the game. I just don't want to be dumb. I'm just playing it safe. I know I can afford some damage on my tower with the miner. And yeah, I managed to get that game. So at this point, he decides to ban... Let's see, what was it? He decides to ban Miner. So I was thinking about him, like, what could I play? And I decided to go with uh, Mega Knight Hogwarter because Graveyard counters it. Um, Tornado is banned, so I know you can't Tornado my Hogwarter away. And let's see, Miner's banned, so you can't out-chip me, really. The only thing you could do that would uh, really beat this is just Rocket Cycle it out with direct damage but with this deck it's so aggressive that you can't really rocket cycle versus it so i i haven't, I haven't practiced this deck a whole lot um well i've played it a decent amount but i wouldn't say i'm like a master at this deck but i know that i can probably beat him so here we go now at this point as i said graveyard tornado and miners bands so yeah, right now I'm just kind of, I'm going to wait a couple seconds. I don't, it's not bad to make the first move with this deck, but you don't want to go super, you don't just want to play your Hog at the River the second the match starts. You want to wait a second or two, just see if they decide to uh, drop an Expo at the River or something like that. Um, unfortunately, my Hog Rider walked in front of the Ice Golem there. I was hoping it would just stay behind the Ice Golem. And... He recognized that I just wasted a bunch of elixir and didn't really get much out of it. So he decides to go aggressive with his expo. Um, but with this deck, he... I don't know. That, that might not have been the... I guess it wasn't a bad expo. But it might not have been the best expo either. So thankfully I have Zap to reset his expo. And I play Mega Knight in the back there just to tank for it. And single elixir it, with an expo deck it's really hard to... Uh, break past past a medium. Uh, bleh. It's really hard to break past a Mega Knight defense. Okay, so here, I knew that he just. Uh, well, I thought that he just wasted his Tesla. I, I was actually wrong. I miscounted the cards a little bit. I thought he just wasted his Tesla. So, I was thinking, hey, I can probably finish off his tower with this Hog Rider push. So I sent in the Hog Ice Golem, and I don't finish it off. But even though he had Tesla and Cycle, I managed to get a lot of damage on it. So I actually miscounted cards a little bit there, but it still ended up working out fine. Um, I just, I play my Infernal Dragon uh, not in the back because I'm not sure at this point if he has Fireball or Rocket. So I don't want to give him Rocket value by playing my Infernal Dragon right on the river. And he wasted Log, so I go in with Goblins. Um, here, this is really unfortunate for him. But honestly... I only got one hit on the tower, so I don't think that's I don't think that would have changed too much. But he misplaces his Tesla and I end up getting a hit, which helped me out a lot. Um 
right now he's just setting up defensive ex uh, Tesla towers and I know I can't break past them so I just decide to fireball the tower and just try to chip him out he plays an expo and since his expo is like awkwardly in the middle there I can play my Mega Knight pretty safely without having to worry about getting killed by the expo um, I go in with Inferno Dragon there because he just spent his Ice Spirit and Ice Golem, so I could get rid of that. Or my Inferno Dragon could get a lot of value killing his extra. Sorry. Okay, so I play a Mega Knight here because I want it to jump over the river onto the Expo. You can kind of manipulate with Mega Knight like where it jumps. So whenever you're reversing an Expo deck, um, you kind of want to play it a little bit out of range of the Expo but like in line with it so that it can jump onto it or even if you're trying to take down a tesla tower play it um like don't play it right next to the tesla tower play it a ways away so that it'll uh jump onto it as i said okay so i'm just kind of playing defense i want to fireball cycle him out at this point because i don't think or i know i'm not going to get my hog rider through because it's double elixir he has such a solid defense he drops his Expo in that position, which I can get a nice Fireball on. And all I'm trying to do now is just Fireball Cycle him out. Um, I get a Fireball on his Expo, and all I need is one more Fireball and one more Zap. But at this point, I don't have memorized like the Fireball Zap uh, damage for Trinity Standard because I play Ladder and stuff, so I, I get confused like what does Ladder damage and what is Trinity Standard damage. But I could have finished him off here with a Fireball Zap. I didn't realize it. Um, it ends up working out fine. So I'm just kind of waiting. I'm thinking... I thought that I needed two Zaps and one Fireball. So I go in with the Hog and try to finish off the tower that way. Uh, he plays it smart. And... Yeah, at this point, I just decided to Zap him. Like, maybe it's... Maybe I can kill the Zap. And turns out I can. So uh, I finished off his tower that way. So he definitely played this... Uh, very well he made it past four other people also and he's an extremely good player but i managed to get the win on him so yeah um thank you guys so much for watching i'm so happy to have won the sandstorm cup it's not that big of a deal but i still think it's kind of cool um i get to either choose 40 dollars or a sandstorm jersey and i'm going to choose 40 dollars because i think i already get a jersey for free with my contract so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the games, and Vulcan out.